if all the migrants disappeared, I don't suppose people's benefits would go up. Um, the government's austerity package is very politically driven and it hasn't actually saved the country any money. Uh, they've got chaos going on in the IT system that they're trying to set up for universal credit and uh, austerity is causing lower pay packets and therefore lower tax returns. It's not migrants' fault. If all the migrants left tomorrow, well, the NHS would collapse, care homes would have to close, uh, agriculture would take a really big hit. But of course, if people are suffering, it's an easy answer and people like UKIP come along and say, oh, look, it's all to do with uncontrolled immigration. Whereas, in fact, the areas that UKIP do best are areas where there are hardly any migrants anyway. Where, where people have experience of migrants in their communities, generally the experiences are favourable. They know that people come here and they work hard. And if they're taking in work credits, it's, that's the fault of employers not paying proper wages. Um, what we need to do is get employers paying proper money so that people don't have to get their wages topped up by the government. Uh, and the fact that the wages are so low um, because of the austerity package and the recovery being based on poverty wages and zero hours contracts and things like that, uh, that's, you know, the government's borrowing, attempt to get borrowing down is way off track now. They've shot themselves in the foot. So migrants are just getting blamed for what the government's done with its sort of half assed attempt to balance the books. But then even that, I mean, the, 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 you know, all these the cuts and the pointing the fingers at people who are supposed to be taking benefits undeservedly, it, it's all politically driven. Basically, this government wants to shrink the state and they saw, you know, the deficit as their opportunity to do it. They want to wind down the welfare state. They want the NHS to be marketised. They want private companies running everything. Uh, and, you know, they're prepared to indulge this idea that migrants are responsible for the pain that, you know, that people are feeling in their, in their wage packets. You still live in London? I still live in South London, yeah. I mean, all the time there's new people arriving. When people say, oh, well, it's easy for you, liberal elite, living in your sort of luxury, where they think we, people like me live, I don't know. But the fact is that, you know, the, the turnover of migrants is massive where I live. One minute you think the area's becoming very Turkish, and then it's going very Polish, and then it's going very Somali, and all these people come, you know, in different ways, and they move about, and they always have done. People have always come to London. People have always come to, to the North East. I mean, how many people in Newcastle are of Irish descent? Um, you know, parts of the dialect even come from the Vikings. And, you know, the Kent coal mines were, were manned by guys from up here going down 100 years ago to work in the pits and getting people thinking, we don't like these Geordies coming down to Kent. You know, I mean, it's ironic. It's Kent again now where... UKIP, uh, sort of Kent and Essex, they're targeting deprived sort of, you know, communities. But like I say, 100 years ago, it was the Geordies being blamed for uh, coming down and sleeping in tent of a room in guest houses and speaking in a funny dialect that the locals didn't understand and standing around in the street, you know, which is what people always complain about, whether it's teenagers or travellers or migrants, it's always this complaint that they stand around in the street as though somehow, I don't know, why, why this is particularly offensive. If people are standing up in the cinema, you think, all right, well, I can't see, but if they're just in the street outside their house. But people are just clutching at straws and trying, looking for people to, to blame. And it's understandable. I mean, it's easier to sort of think, I blame that bloke with a funny voice who comes from somewhere else than actually look at what the government's doing. And, and obviously wages are low, uh, which is you know, directly because of bad employment practices and government policy. Um, and, you know, yes, um, people are brought in specifically to bring wages down. So you have to make sure that's not what's happening because those people are being exploited. And the unions need to reach out and the unions need to say, you know, you need to be in a union. If you're going to work in construction or whatever you're doing, you need to be in a union. And, you, and workers need to have solidarity. Wherever they've come from, they need to stand together to keep wages up. Going back to um, to London, is it in your in your your experience has grown up there and, and or about being there? Is that something you think we should be celebrating now? That, you know the idea that you know there there isn't like a monocultural Britain anymore. Well, where I grew up, I grew up in Surrey, and I left thirty two years ago, and I was just desperate to get out because it was just so boring. You know, I remember that the fact of there being a Chinese in the village caused such a flurry of excitement, you know, it was sort of something that tasted different from 
what we'd been used to. And Kentucky Fried Chicken was like pretty exotic in those days. And I moved to London and I just thought, this is amazing. You know, people are playing, playing reggae out of windows of houses. And, and what's a plantain? And what's a yam? And what's all these different food smells? And what's and, it, and now it keeps, you know, waves of different people come in. And, and uh, I say waves, not like it's a, some torrent that's sort of submerging everybody. But, you know, you've got now, you've got um, Lebanese restaurants opening everywhere. And, um, you know, and... and you know, we didn't know what Thai food was 40 years ago. I never heard of Thai food. And now everybody thinks, oh, Thai food, that's just the best, best night out Thai food. And I mean, I'm not saying that people should, everyone that comes in needs to be feeding us just because our own diet's so crap. But, um, and I like meat and two veg as well. But, um, but, you know, there's no doubt that it makes the country more interesting and more, more exciting, more, you know, and, and it's, it's reflected in sport and in music and, and in the arts and, and also in everyday life because most ordinary people have a lot of interaction with people who are migrants or from migrant backgrounds because, you know, if your mother, if your parents are in the care home, my mum passed away two years ago, but she was, you know, kept going by, by people who, who were migrants, you know. Um, the NHS is kept going. Um, people meet, if you work in construction, if you work in transport, you'll, you'll meet people every day, your co-workers will be people that have come here or who were the kids of people who came here. And you have that interaction. You know that these people have come, just come here to work and they'll, they'll work hard and they're not here to take something that they're not entitled to or they don't deserve. And, you know, we have the right. I mean, anybody that, you know, remembers Alfida saying pet and knows that people have gone from here t to work in Europe. It's, I mean, our economy is, you know, there's lots of, there's lots of uh, jobs being generated at the moment. And the wages aren't high here, they're very, very low, but they're higher than people might be getting in, in Romania or, or Poland or Bulgaria. So, yeah, there, there's a pull. But, I mean, it's arguable that, we, that there wouldn't be a re any sort of recovery happening if it wasn't for people coming and, you know, working and, and paying into the system and, and actually keeping, um, keeping some businesses going. There seems to be no political parties at the moment... Um, you know, Dennis Skinner made that fantastic speech on migrants in Parliament, but you know, of the mainstream political parties, none of them seem to want to defend immigration. Well, I think they're all letting UKIP set, set the agenda, and they. And I mean, it is a fact that while we're part of the EU, that um, you can't actually control numbers. It hasn't been a. It hasn't created a nightmare in terms of you know you keep saying there are these hundreds of millions of people who could come here well they haven't and they're not going to um people will come while there while there are jobs you know i mean you can argue people need to work harder employers need to work harder to try and help their own communities they need to get into the schools and say look these are the employment opportunities available in this area if you think you would like to come and work for us when you leave school, contact us, and you, know, and you need to have apprenticeships. I mean, apprenticeships are all being taken, a lot of them are being taken by people in their 50s and people over 25. So this whole flagship apprenticeship scheme is not working. It's just in terms of getting people, you know, young people into the workplace. What it's doing is just meaning that people who are unemployed are taking poverty wages to just as a way into as a way into employment. You know, and employers are creating apprenticeships, which are basically jobs. Uh, that they're calling apprenticeships, they don't have to pay people properly. I mean, what we need to do is make is make people pay proper money, and and if that means that we have to pay more money for for you know fruit and veg because the people that pick fruit and veg for us in in East Anglia need to need to be paid properly, well, that's what we'll have to do. Um, but you know, we're a very unequal society, and some people are you know, super rich and some people are really struggling and that's something that needs to be addressed. But I think all the political parties are nervous and Labour's lost its way in terms of, you know, saying the things that it could be saying that they could get votes with. I mean, if Labour said, right, we're going to renationalise the railways and we're going to make absolutely sure the NHS has got enough money and nothing else is going to be privatised and we're going to stop profiteering and we're going to make sure that people pay decent wages, Labour would walk the election. But because they're nervous and because they've got still got this Blairite legacy of light touch as regards the market and not alienating middle class wavering voters who don't like the sound of anything that sounds like it might be socialism, because they're afraid of that, 
their history, the Labour Party's own history, they're just chasing chasing the UKIP vote, which is, you can't keep up with that and it's pointless. You know, if people are saying they don't basically want immigrants here and that we need to leave the EU, well, right, we have the argument about leaving the EU, but you're not going to, they're not, Labour aren't going to be able to, com you know, compete with UKIP. And UKIP will wither at some point and die because they haven't really got that much of any interest to say and they'll get some MPs elected and they'll get some councillors elected and some MEPs and then people will see that all their MEPs are just having you know having a high old time on the expenses that they get in Brussels and uh, you know uh, UKIP are rubbish at you know as councillors and as MPs because they don't actually care about those communities they're just you know their own sort of got their own egotistical agendas that they're pursuing and all these weird guys that are leaving the Tory party I mean, you know to join UKIP you think well they're just the seeing they've got more of a political career there because they've they've, they've 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 achieved very little in the Tory party they haven't got anywhere but suddenly they can be all over the telly as a big star because they're UKIP's first MPs you know show racism the red card